time? Yes. Yeah. All right. I can't stand being recorded. Um, we'll show up on eBay or something. Or eBay. <laughs> show up on MySpace or something. Right. Yeah. Anyway, what we want to talk about today is diffraction. And in order to talk about diffraction, the first thing I want to do is set up a little scenario and then draw a picture of it, and then we'll see how this works. Where you come in, slacker boy. Over. Pull up a chair, sit on the floor, grab one of those things. So the first thing I want to do, and for UAP people who missed today, in order to do this, you're going to need a packet from me, and you'll have to come get the packet, or else watching this video will be a waste of time, because you won't be able to refer to anything on the packet. But that's what you get for sleeping in. Wait, no, that's not what they get more sleep of. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so first thing I want to do is I want to grab a couple pieces of tissue here. And those are going to represent by little boxes here. And they're separated by a certain distance, D. Now when I turn these speakers on, they're going to send out sound waves. And the sound waves, as it gets farther from the speaker, you can see that ultimately these sound waves will start to interfere with each other. Oops, that's not drawn very well, but what do you expect? So here we have these sound waves as they, oops, as they get farther from the speaker. You get regions where, where this, this line will interfere with that line, that's called constructive interference. If I were to look at this from the side, if I were to look at a couple of these things from the side, these represent the crests, and the trough would be exactly in the middle. Now some physics books will draw a little dashed line for the trough, but if I were to look at this sideways, I would see the crest, the trough, the crest, the trough, the crest. So the top of this line represents the crest, and the middle of the line represents the trough. So that would be what it looks like on the side. We're looking down at those waves. And so you can see at these points right here, where this wave crest interferes with this wave crest, where these lines intersect, you get a interference pattern. You get constructive interference. Now, also, you have places where a crest lines up with a trough. Now what happens when a crest lines up with a trough? Destructive. You get destructive interference. And so what happens, and this is exactly the same thing happens with light, except with light, instead what you do is you shine a beam of light through two slits. It's called Young's, Thomas Young did an experiment way back in the day. And this is the classic experiment which shows that light acts like a wave. It shows the wave particle, the wave nature of light it is this two slit interference experiment. Sometimes on the AP test, I'll ask a simple question about that. And as long as I'm on that subject, we haven't studied it yet, but the photoelectric effect is the experiment that shows the particle nature of light. Sometimes that comes up. But what they did with light is he shined what's called monochromatic light, mono, single color, which means it has a certain wavelength, a certain frequency of light. You shine that light through two slits, and when the light traveled through the two slits, you got the same thing happening, didn't you? Yes. And you get the same pattern, except instead of light, it works with sound. And then what he did is he put a screen over here, a certain distance away, he put a screen there, and right in the middle of the screen you got bright spots. What? It looks like a face. Making fun of it? Okay, well anyway, you got, you got a bright spot in the middle and you got dark spots. Well, instead of a bright spot, what do you think you're going to get with sound? Loud and soft. You're going to get loud and soft. So let's try that. Yeah. And so what we can do is take these speakers, and it kind of depends how far away they are as to what kind of pattern you get and how far away the speakers are, but you can actually do an experiment and if we knew the distance away right here, okay, oh, sorry, that's weird on the camera. But if I know the distance away from those speakers I am, 
and I walk out this, I can walk a certain distance along a line right here. And if I know, you know, where this dark, this loud spot is and where there's a soft spot and a loud spot, I can actually, there's lots of cool things you can do. You can actually set up an experiment. If I know this distance, I know this distance, and I know the distance between the spots, I can figure out what those frequencies are. And I know, uh, I was talking to a physics teacher just the other day at his school, and he did that experiment. He said they got really good results. <coughs> if we had more time, which we never have enough time, that would be fun to do that experiment. Maybe after the AP test we can do that. And really cement it in your heads. So let's see. Let's turn this thing on. And let's... I, I can change the frequency if I want to. I can lower it. I'm at about 390 hertz, 450 hertz. How much time have I spent? Six minutes. Okay. So I think we should probably do this in what, 10 minute segments? 440. 440. 440 hertz. 440 is middle, what is that, C? A. A. Hey. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Oops. Oh, who cares? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I want to get a certain distance away. And I want to plug one ear, and I want to walk in a straight line this way. If I do that, then I theoretically should be able to hear, hear loud and soft, loud and quiet. So I'm going to walk along. Oh, wow. Loud. Oh, loud. Oh, soft. <laughs> loud. Oh, really loud. I mean, it must be, this is called the central maximum. This... Uh, if it was light, it would be called, if I'm in between those points, you can see that the, the waves have the same distance to travel. So if those waves have the same distance to travel, they meet constructively. And this is called the zero, if it's light, it's called the zero fringe. And it's the loudest spot. Now if I walk a certain distance away, it will get softer, loud, it will get softer. And you can hear it, okay? Um, why don't you all try it? Seriously, I want you some of you. I want you to walk along the front, plug one ear, and try it. Winston, I'll hold this while you try it. Or should I pause it? If I pause, pause. it though, will it go back, or we'll have to make a new tape? New tape. All right. So we'll just do the first ten minutes of this. All right. Let's try these nerds. Okay. Walk along, and and if you go too close, you want to go. I wish we had more room to walk. You want to go as close to the desk as possible. But when you walk along, you should hear a, a loud and then soft. Right here, you can't hear anything. You should notice a difference in the frequency, in the, in the oh intensity. You feel that? It's actually loud for me, too. But I'm saying, you, know that you definitely notice a difference. When you walk along, you'll notice the difference as you travel along in the intensity of the sound. That is so cool. Yeah. It really does work. It's really kind of, as you all would say in your lingo, neato. Now, I don't know if you can totally get a deaf spot. I mean, you can, but see, the other thing is we have reflection going on. And when they design auditoriums in place for acoustics, they have to take this into account. And so what they try to do is they try to get enough reflections and other things occurring so that there won't be any deaf spots. Okay? So let's pause it now, and we'll continue with part two now.